Strap in, you're about to blast off into an entirely new galaxy. One that's full of epic megastructures and interstellar travel. This is a Type 3 civilization. One of the most advanced civilizations humanity has ever dreamt of. Normally, we just talk about what a Type 3 civilization might look like, but today, you're going to visit it and experience all it has to offer. Is a world like this even possible? What would be the biggest advancement this civilization would have? And why would extra planets be so important? Okay, you've made it to Galaxy 3812 a hypothetical galaxy that houses a Type 3 civilization. But how did they get to this advanced point? Well, millions of years ago, this universe looked a lot like ours. It was known as a Type 0 civilization. Then, after generations of research and hard work, they figured out how to utilize the entire power of Earth. All the energy produced by solar, wind, and geothermal was at their disposal. Generations later, they started traveling to other planets and creating new civilizations. They're now a Type II civilization. And generations after that, they've become a Type III civilization. What is a Type III civilization, exactly? Well, you're about to experience it firsthand, but in short, it means humanity can now control its entire galaxy. Let's dive into more detail on what that means for this civilization. One of the first things you'll notice are the Dyson spheres that surround the different stars in this galaxy. These theoretical megastructures would be constructed of incredibly strong, advanced materials that can cover a star and withstand its extreme heat. Once this structure is built, it'll distribute power across the solar system. This will allow the civilization to create and power things bigger and better than ever before. Interstellar travel, planet colonization, and more that we'll get to a little later on. You might see a couple of different versions of these Dyson spheres as you travel across the galaxy. There's the classic Dyson Sphere, a solid shell or series of rings that fully wraps around a star. Then there's the Dyson Swarm, a group of satellites rotating around a star, collecting its energy. And finally, there's the Dyson Bubble. This one is a bunch of mirrors floating in space and near the star. The idea is that the mirrors will redirect the star's energy to where it's needed. Okay, we've stared at the sun long enough. Now it's time to experience the different ways you can travel around. You might fancy a hyper-advanced spaceship. SpaceX or NASA can't come close to what a Type 3 civilization offers. You know, climate change isn't just affecting the Earth, it's also affecting your expenses. Yeah, homeowner insurance is getting more expensive than ever thanks to wildfires and floods. In fact, as of October 10th, there were 24 weather and climate disasters that have cost the United States $1 billion in 2023. This has led top insurance companies to raise premiums and to stop issuing policies. These extreme weather scenarios may continue to make home ownership more expensive and challenging. The only way to truly solve this issue is to make sure we stop releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. If humans stop burning fossil fuels, it'll help change the course of climate change and this extreme weather. Hop into your futuristic spaceship, press a couple of buttons, and suddenly you're traveling to an entirely different solar system. How? Well, you could fly into a wormhole or a warp drive that allows you to travel faster than the speed of light. Just make sure you set your coordinates correctly. And if you want to take a slower route without using any fuel, you can try traveling via solar sails. This new spacecraft uses large mirrors to propel itself, using solar radiation pressure from a star. This will help you travel longer distances without the need to carry any fuel. And it won't just be about humans having new ways to travel. We'll also have things like launch loops to send materials around space. 
These would be long, thin cables that would help materials travel through solar systems. They'd be constructed in a straight line to help the materials maintain their momentum as they traveled through the tube. This would allow civilizations to easily transport materials throughout the solar system, making space colonization faster than ever. Speaking of which, what would colonizing space be like? Well, let's take our super advanced spaceship and warp over to the Type 3 civilization's most populated planet. As soon as you arrive, you'll be overwhelmed by an advanced and futuristic space colony. But it wasn't always like this. Millions of years ago, when this civilization was a Type 0, this planet looked similar to what Mars or Venus might look like today. The environment was incredibly hostile to human life. It had no atmosphere, and it seemed impossible that billions of people could live here one day. But over millions of years, that's changed. A large part of this massive change was due to a Type 3 civilization's power to terraform planets. That has given this civilization the ability to modify key aspects of planets in their solar systems. From adjusting the atmosphere to changing the entire surface. This could be done in multiple ways. A Type 3 civilization might be able to nuke a planet, altering its topography and releasing any gases the planet might have. They could also release genetically engineered organisms that can live on and alter the planet in various ways. You could release an organism that might be able to suck up or change any toxins in the atmosphere. Regardless of the method used, after just a few decades, a Type 3 civilization might have a hyper-advanced planet that looks like this. And it wouldn't just be one or two measly planets being colonized. Any planet they wanted to inhabit, terraform, and populate, they would. This civilization would have the technology and power to do this at will. Even a planet's orbit could be changed whenever they wanted. If the civilization really likes a planet, but they don't like its spot, well, they can move it to an area of the solar system that would be easier to sustain life. This would be done with things like large-scale thrusters and the ability to alter gravity. But planets wouldn't be the only places humans would live in a Type 3 civilization. Let's go check those out. Okay, remember the Dyson Sphere we looked at earlier? That's a megastructure, and there are a lot more of them throughout the galaxy. One of them being the O'Neill Cylinder. This habitat is a massive rotating cylinder. It's six and a half kilometers in diameter and 26 kilometers long. This megastructure would house millions of people and could feel exactly like Earth. We could control the temperature, the weather, the day and night cycle, whatever we wanted. Another megastructure we could build for fun would be an Alderson disk. This would be like a massive disk-shaped version of Earth. Edge to edge, this DVD would be thousands of kilometers long. But it wouldn't be as cushy as the O'Neill Cylinder. That's because only the inner parts of the ring would be habitable for humans. Closer to the hole, it would be too hot, and the edges would be too cold. But then again, we're living in a Type 3 civilization, and we'd have virtually unlimited power, so humanity would probably figure out how to solve these problems. If we wanted to build these megastructures in our universe, well, we'd need to mine almost every planet in our solar system, but in this Type 3 civilization, it's no biggie. Since we could seamlessly travel to multiple solar systems, it would be easy to mine a few solar systems that we don't really care about. Now, in addition to all these incredible advancements, humanity would be moving toward a Type 4 civilization. This means that they'd have access to multiple universes, and they'd slowly be making their way toward immortality. Want to see what happens in the other types of civilizations? Well, that sounds like a story for another What If.